I re oh, you I re are. Uh, that minutes pertaining to an individual's job performance or character, pre-deprivation hearings, and non-renewal of teacher contracts remain sealed. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Ligori. There's been a motion by Ms. Luzon and a second by Ms. Ligori to recommend that the minutes pertaining to an individual's job performance or character remain sealed. It's on pre-deprivation hearings and non-renewal of teacher contracts. Those in favor? Any opposed or recusals, abstentions? Oh, okay, so that's unanimous. Thank you very much. I recommend that minutes pertaining to litigation, RGB update, remain sealed. So moved. There's been a motion by Ms. Luzon and a second by Ms. McAllister to recommend that the minutes pertaining to litigation, RGB update, remain sealed. Those in favor? Thank you. Any opposition? Abstentions? Recusals? No, that was unanimous. Thank you very much. I recommend that minutes relating to the privacy of students and their records, approval of home instruction requests, remain sealed. So moved. Thank you, Ms. McAllister and Ms. Luzon. Ms. Luzon made a motion. Mr. McAllister seconded it to recommend that the minutes relating to the privacy of students and their records, approval of home instruction requests, remain sealed. Those in favor? Okay. Any opposition? No. Abstentions, recusals. That's unanimous also. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Giusti? Thank you. Um, executive session votes. Uh, the first was uh, non-renewal of teacher contracts. Uh, in favor, Abbott, Callahan, Chambers, Day, Giusti, Liguori, Luzon, Lyle, McAllister, Reynolds, and Spears. Um, the next were executive session minutes of January 11th, 2022, home instruct instruction requests um, approved by Abbott, Callahan, Chambers, Juicy, Ligori, Luzon, Lyle, McAllister, Reynolds, and Spears. Mr. Day abstained. Um, home instruction requests from tonight. All were in favor. Abbott, Callahan, Chambers, Day, Juicy, Ligori, Luzon, Lyle, McAllister, Reynolds, and Spears. And finally, it was unanimous vote to return to open session. Abbott, Callahan, Chambers, Day, Juicy, Ligori, Luzon, Lyle, McAllister, Reynolds, and Spears. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Juicy. Okay, we're on to recognition. Superintendent Picard. So please join me in congratulating the following students. High school junior Madeline Lucier received two silver keys and a gold key for her photography entries in between the lines silver and reflection silver and thoughts by the seaside gold in the Rhode Island Scholastic Art Competition. Her gold key winning work will automatically advance to the national level of adjudication in New York City in March. We also have Margaret Whedon and Erin Van Hoosen each finished first in two events in the Sullivan Division Girls Indoor Track Dual Meet at the Providence Korean Technical Academy. Margaret took first place in the high jump and long jump, and Erin took first place in the 1500 and the 1000. Canyon Baker finished first in the shot put in the Boys Southern Division Indoor Track Meet at the Providence Korean Technical Academy. The Chargers took first in the Griswold Wrestling Tournament. Brady Anderson, Corbin Mariah, and Ryan Courier each finished first in their respective weight class. Gary Gardner won three matches with pins at a quad wrestling meet against Exeter West Greenwich, Coventry, and Bishop Hendrickson. He is 8-0 with eight pins. We were informed by the Rhode Island Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association that Cherahoe Regional High School is receiving the George Nasuti School of the Year Award for Athletics. We were also informed that our girls soccer coach, Brittany Godbow, is receiving the Female Coach of the Year, and Stephanie and Dan Potts are receiving the Sister Charlene Tedeschi Distinguished Service Award. Congratulations to all. Awesome. <laughs> Go Chargers. Okay, so now we're in uh, part of our agenda, which is public forum. Um, those from the public will have an opportunity to speak on any item that's not on the agenda. If you are wanting to speak, um, you can use the raise your hand format. Um, and what we'll do is we'll allow you to be, we will allow you into the, into the, pan, into the panel. So um, any of you who would like, okay, I have one, Mr. Hopkins. Um, Mr. Hopkins, you have the floor. All right, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Frank. All right, welcome. Uh, good evening and thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. 
My name is Frank Hopkins. I'm from the town of Charlestown. Uh, I'm a retired healthcare administrator, a Rotarian, and a longtime volunteer in the Charho school system. And I'm here tonight to share with the committee in the community listening in for a life-changing opportunity for those of you who want to make a difference in a child's future. The abundance of skills and talents each of us has can be shared with our youth in a nurturing, compassionate environment and you can make surprising impacts on the development of our students. Our community family has a rich diversity of attributes and gifts, and you can be an amazing influence by sharing those with the youth of our community. How can you do that? You can join our mentoring program, which is open to middle and high school students. What do you need to be a mentor? A sincere desire to be involved with a young person, respect for young people, empathy, active listening skills, the ability to see solutions and opportunities. What can you do as a mentor? You can share time with a student, listen to their aspirations and hopes for the future, find a common skill or talent you can help them learn, share a group experience with us, like a kayak ride down the Wood River, a group swim at the Y, an obstacle course at Camp Watchhog. Help a student navigate a summer job application, for a college visit. What do you get back? You make a difference in someone's life and improve their self-esteem. You can achieve personal growth and learn about yourself, understand other cultures and appreciate diversity, meet other volunteers and staff and be changed and you will be changed by your relationship with that student. If you go to the Charahoe School District website under Parent Student Resources, you'll see the Chill Charahoe Mentoring Program it explains the program and has a mentor application. We have a real need for male mentors and hope that the gentlemen in our community will step up. We hope you'll consider joining us on this most rewarding journey. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Mr. Hopkins. Um, Next one is uh, Pixel 3A XL. You are allowed to, you have the floor. I'm sorry, if we could just make sure we get everybody's name and the town that they're from, I would appreciate yeah, I will, that. I will. Thank you, Ms. Yeah. Um, could you please uh, introduce yourself? Uh, Pixel 3A XL. You're not, you have to unmute. Okay. okay. Hey. My um, I'm, this is Colby Williams. Where are you? Where are you I'm from? Sarah meeting this Thursday at the February 10th at the Cala Building. It is a virtual, or is it at two thirty? Um, there is a Cab Caller meeting at two thirty. Um, and it's a public meeting because I know I'm part of that. So I can answer that question. Is it in person or is it a virtual? It, it's in person. Okay. And um, we can ask whatever questions we have on the CALA program. Well, it, it's basically based on our CAB. It's what we're, the work we're doing to improve the, the experience for the students in that school. Well, when my son was in the rise for Morcala, there was no pleasant trees in that. He was bullied the full time he was well, this, there. And this and is not a, I'm sorry, ma'am. This is not the forum. Um, you are welcome to attend that Cab Cala meeting and as a parent, but um, it's it's really, we, we do a lot. We work at that meeting. There's a lot of uh, uh, good work that's going on, but you're welcome to come and see what we're doing. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else from the um, from the uh, public that would like uh, a chance to speak? Please raise your hands or hand. <laughs> oh, Mr. Perney, I see that you have your hand raised. Okay, I'm gonna promote you to panelists because you have an older version of Zoom, Mr. Perney. There you are.
Good evening, Ms. Lyle. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Thank you. I uh, appreciate the patients that are getting connected. Um, I just wanted to uh, bring up and, and, and was, I guess, wondering when, when the uh, meetings would, I guess, start back in person. We're through kind of the Omicron uh, variant here. We're through the Delta variant. And, you know, we kind of went through those in person. And now the fact that we're kind of through those, I know things change pretty much on the daily basis here. I uh, was wondering when meetings would be back in person. Ms. Picard, do you want to address that as far as what we know? <laughs> um, I know the, right now the executive order ends February 14th. I know the governor is speaking tomorrow, and I'm, I'm, I've heard from the town managers that there may be hybrid options or virtual options to con, uh, con continue, but um, I'm not sure. I think he's going to address it tomorrow. Yeah, so the governor will have that in his address tomorrow. Madam Chair, I just love that date. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bad joke. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank but you. Hopefully, Mr. Perney, hopefully we'll all know something soon in the very near future. Um, and hopefully tomorrow he'll have some information or news for us. Because we're all anxious to see, you know, when we can get back to person also. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Take care, folks. You're welcome. You're welcome. Does anyone else from the public have their, please come forward. Just raise your hands. Hand. <laughs> I, Mr. Hopkins, I see you still have your hand raised. I don't think you have any up there. Do you want? Do you want to speak again, Ms. Mr. Hopkins? No, no. I, I'm sorry, Linda. I forgot That's okay. To That's okay. That's okay. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, thank you. Just well, I don't see anybody else from the public who has their hands raised, so I think we can move on to business. At this point, thank you very much, and thank you for those who who uh, came forward. Um, we're on to business. So the first business item is the CTE equipment grant. It was uh, due to a quick turnaround. Director Jerry Auth and Katie Karakosian submitted this grant request on January twenty eighth to ride, based on their deadline. I recommend approval of the CTE equipment grant request to ride in the amount of $221,407.52 for the Cherahoe Tech program equipment. And Director Auth is available if there's any questions. So, so moved. So I have, okay, so I have a, a, I have a, a twin. No, so we had a, a motion by uh, Ms. Dulzan, a second by Catherine Juicy to approve the CTE equipment grant. I'd like to open this up to any questions or comments. Mr. Off is here if you have any questions. I think it's a great idea. I hope we can get some of this, these funds, which would be great. Um, Mr. Off, do you have anything you'd like to add to the, to the conversation before we take a vote? I don't want to stir the pot. I'm happy everyone's silent, so I'll just- Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, so I'll take that to a vote. Those in favor to approve the grant? Any opposition? No, nope. any recusals or abstentions? Great, it was unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you for putting that grant together too, Mr. Off and Ms. Boz and the whole crew. <laughs> okay, so B. Next is the 2022-2023 uh, high school program of studies. The only changes are the dates the new personnel and the addition of the course descriptions the school committee approved, which is statistics um, college prep and statistics honors courses. I recommend approval of the 2022-2023 high school program of studies. And uh, Jean Bredanini is available if you have any questions. So moved. I thought, okay, so, uh, Ms. Luzon made the motion and Donna, Ms. Chambers seconded to approve the 2022-23 high school program of studies. Anyone have any questions? Um, Ms. Chambers. Just, um, just a comment. Um, it gave us an opportunity to look over the, the uh, program of studies for the whole, um, you know, all of it. And I am so impressed with the offerings that we are providing for our children. Um, it's amazing how many courses there are and choices there are for these kids. It's exciting and I just commend anyone that's involved in putting this together. I think it's an excellent high school program. Thank you, Ms. Chambers. I guess there's no other 
discussion. Oh, Mr. Day, do you have your hand raised, sir? Uh, yes, I was looking at the uh, student activities here on the back page mm -hmm. of, of the, the book booklet here, and uh, uh, I might be, a, I'm not, I don't mean to be nitpicking, but uh, with student activities, uh, I, I think we might be missing a couple of them here. I, I know that we have a co-ed uh, hockey team and we have uh, rest, uh, swimmers and, and other individuals, and I, and I don't notice them listed here. And uh, I think if, if we're going to uh, try to highlight student activities, we ought to, we ought to make sure that we're, we're including all of them. Uh, for, for our students, uh, that's my sports. That's my sports uh, tie-in with with the with the district, I guess. Do we have? Are they all? Uh, did we did we check those, um, Miss Picard, Superintendent Picard? Are we missing any? I can have them. Um, to Bill's point, I I don't see the the new girls uh, the co-ops, and I don't see the other one from last year. My wonder is is. Um, is there, is it because of that we're not the lead school? I, but I can ask, I don't think that's a, um, a concern to add. I think it's always nice to show all the programming that's available. So yeah, I'll have them double check. I agree. Section. Well, I've always been an advocate that we should be tooting our own horn because nobody else around here will toot it for us. So uh, the more, the more that we can, uh, put out there and I think is a, a, a feather in our cap if some if someone is thinking about come in as a vote tech, they can qualify for the co-ed hockey team and come from a school that doesn't have hockey and play hockey here, which might help your vote tech program. And actually to your point, Mr. Day, I, th I don't think we added the eSports as well, which was a new one that from the last meeting. So I can have- no, I, I don't consider that a sport. <laughs> I'm serious, I, I voted for it, but- uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's an activity. activity. It's, it's an, an activity. activity, it's not a sport, it's an activity. <laughs> Mr. Luzon, you had your hand raised. Yeah, um, as much as uh, I have two daughters and they both play field hockey, and as much as I grew to love the game of field hockey, it is on here twice. It is? Yep, girls field hockey and field hockey. And they, should it say boys field hockey? We don't have a boys field hockey. Oh, see, yeah, I didn't know that. That was a good catch, thank you. So do we want to vote with those changes or do we want to see these changes before we vote on it? Personally, I think uh, that we've brought it up that it's going to get changed, but I, I still feel we can follow through on the vote. Okay. I just wanted to make sure everyone's comfortable with that and make sure those things, any, any other uh, pickups or any other things? Maybe we can have somebody take a second peek at that, Ms. Picard. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, okay thank you. So. Um, any other questions or additions? Those were all great, great uh, finds. Okay, I'll take this to a vote. Those in favor to accept the uh, program of studies with the amendments that will come forward. Uh, any against, opposed, abstentions or recusals? That was unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, the next item is the high school mathematics resource selection. Um, I know Dr. Kamel is already on the line and I know we have Susie Skinnipiega who's going to review the presentation. So I'm gonna promote Susie to the panelist. And Gina, if she, uh, you could share a screen, allow her to share a screen. Yes, I would absolutely, okay. I'm gonna make her, uh, okay. Ms. Skinnipiega, welcome. I, you should have sharing opportunities at this point. So if you wanna check and I'll make sure that works. Perfect. Can you all see my screen? And can you hear me? Yes? yes? Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. It's been a while since I've seen you last. Um, I'm here tonight to review um, the selection of the new curriculum res um, resources that we've chosen at the high school level. Um, just to review, um, let me put this in presentation mode. Can you see that well? Yes. Okay, so um, just to remind everyone that the reason we had gone through this selection was because of Rhode Island legislation that said that by June of 2023, we were required to pick um, resources that were considered green on an ed reports 
list. Um, the idea being that that was a point of universality amongst the state that we would all have high quality curriculum materials to work with. And I really um, kind of appreciated that legislation. Um, I think we needed to all be on the same page. And luckily um, at the middle school, we started that work last year and we were only working at getting the um, algebra one geometry and algebra two going at the high school for this year because those are the required courses at our school. Um, we will also be looking at the other elective maths and getting pre-calculus and calculus books eventually. But at this point um, today, I'm going to be sharing what we found um, for the legislation. The three that we chose to research at the high school were two McGraw-Hill products and one Carnegie Learning product. The McGraw-Hill were um, one that's called Illustrative and one called Reveal. And the one at Carnegie Learning really was a simple word. It was called MathBook and Mathia Software. And um, all three had pros and cons, of course, but we really took um, our time and paying it to each of them. I created a team um, of volunteers that wanted to look into this set of books and resources. I'm going to actually open this Padlet so that you can see it in a live way. Um, can you still see that screen? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to bring to everyone's attention that we did have representation of all stakeholders. So we did have a parent survey. We did have a teacher survey. We had our team that I will show you here um, that in, really had all the stakeholders involved um, with Dr. Camella, who was new to us. And then Mrs. Florenz, who, because we teach algebra at the middle school was involved. We had a special educator. We had the math specialist who works mostly with the RTI students, um, a math teacher, Mr. Main, who is the department head. We also had Mr. Bailey, who was the prior department head. Um, myself and Chris Barbin, who's the content leader at the middle school. So really a vast um, set of opinions and really different vantage points when we were looking at these materials. Um, we had a set protocol. We really paid attention to um, how we were going to do all of this work and keeping ourselves accountable. So including like um, specific dates and times when we would come together to see both the hard copies of things, but also the digital copies, um, the digital resources of things so that it wasn't um, too much for these volunteers in their day to sit through like a three hour PD on all of this all at once. We really tried to give each of the different uh, companies and their resources the time to look through them all. We basically picked one lesson, for example, you know, systems of equations in algebra. And we really tried to focus on how that was taught in three of, in the three resources, both with the online and the hard copy resources available. And that gave us a really good indicator of what we felt we were gonna find the most growth with and the most um, comfort in a sense too, um, because we are a high tech school and we wanted to make sure there was efficiencies and things that will let all the things we've been working so hard for in a one-to-one -one setting really become useful. Um, we went through the Charahoe School District selection procedure. We did all the things with each of the options. Um, I will spare you all of the specifics on that, but the end result was that reveal came out with the highest score of 97 um, using the average of all the, all the members of the team submitted scores. So it was um, this, it was a collective set of data. Um, the summary, I know you have received this uh, slideshow in advance, so I'm sure you read this, but ma mainly what we want to highlight here is that Reveal offered both paper and pencil and online resources that were the most robust. We felt that they were user-friendly for both teachers and the students. We know that when things are user-friendly, the time on task is more spent on the math and not on the procedural pieces of getting to the math. And that um, to me is very important. It offered a lot of practice problems, which was something that we found in past resources wasn't enough. Um, we also felt that there was a nice balance between theory and fluency, which we find um, with Common Core. So we sit between a common core middle school curriculum 
and uh, college experience. And so it's always a really a balancing act between the theory that is involved in common core standards, but also the fluency that's expected at a college level. And so we really felt that Reveal offered both. In addition to that, Reveal offers, or McGraw-Hill, I should say, offers a supplemental package with a program called Alex. And Alex is an AI program, um, artificial intelligence, that allows students to work at their uh, grade level specifically and within target areas that they are specifically lacking, maybe have a gap in because of something that happened in third grade or something like that. And it really pinpoints where they need additional help and offers a really great growth model. And we're very excited to see what that's gonna bring to us. We have a similar one working at the middle school right now and we're already seeing gains um, by the, my path, I'm sure you heard it um, in your other discussions and we're seeing gains there. Alex is similar in a lot of ways but it's at the high school level. And so we're hoping to see really great um, gains for especially the gapped students. So we're thinking that's gonna be a really great useful piece for RTI. Um, once we picked Reveal and Alex, we had another group of teachers that really um, became our early adopters and they have started already getting PD. They had two hours of PD for Reveal and one hour of PD for Alex already. We did this um, in a voluntary way. They are our spring pilot. And so hopefully we get some of the technology glitches out of the way, things that you know our resources, um, luckily Sean Cole is excellent and very, very helpful. But of course, when anything's new, there's gonna be a glitch here and there. And between everybody um, working together, we've already ironed out quite a few of them so that September will be a much stronger start. Um, again, I use the, a Padlet for organization purposes here just to keep everyone in the loop. Um, the customer service at McGraw-Hill has been unbelievable. And even when we have just a simple little issue, they are quick to respond and working with our technology department really, really well. And we just overall have found that their professional development is exemplary. Um, we've already seen in just a couple of days that they've been on it, that there's people using the Alex program, which is great. That means they are eager to get working on it. Again, it's a pilot, but it could have had zero percents there in the few days. And yet we're already seeing some usage and that's really great. Um, that's all I have for you tonight, um, but I'm sure there are questions and concerns. So please feel free to ask me those. Good, we're back to screen. Does anyone have any questions for the team? For Susie or, and or Mr. Camilla, Dr. Camilla? I think I'm most excited that the teachers seem very engaged at this point and eager to get started. They were part of the process the whole way through. Um, and I think with the fact that we've gone through this once with the middle school and had the spring pilot and that's, you know, it's gonna still have bumps of course because it's a brand new program, but that pilot really helps. And so the high school taking on that same model is really nice. Um, and so far we're already hearing good things. Um, Ms. McAllister, you have the floor. You have a question or a comment? Yes, thank you. No, I just wanted to say how impressed I am with the amount of work that was put into um, this selection. I, I know it's difficult, and when you're having to look at several um, different programs, um, this one was you just put it together very carefully, and it's very impressive, and we thank you. Thank you. I agree. I think the, the work that was done was very thorough and very thoughtful. So I think they, you know, you, you did, you did the job and you, you chose the one that's best for, for our school community and for our teachers also. So I, I think it was, thank you very much for all that, that work and time. Anybody else have any questions? Mrs. Ms. Chambers. This was great. I, I also love the presentation. I have one of those math books that I picked up at a um, convention and it is excellent. And I don't know the others that you were choosing from, but this is an excellent series, very deep, very 
comprehensive, heavy books, <laughs> but they're good, good, very well presented. And I love that it integrates the technology along with the, the work in the book. So it's excellent, Susie. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chambers. I do think that that was a real um, want from the teachers was the option between pen, paper and pencil and online and that choice being almost a daily choice, not a year long, month long, quarter long choice, but today with this particular lesson, it's gonna be better to work with paper and pencil. Tomorrow we might practice that same skill online and having that flexibility and possibly having that flexibility even amongst students, you three might work on a workbook while you three might be working on the online because it's your best learning experience. That's really what they were hoping to get. Excellent, very good, yeah. Excellent, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so any other questions? Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much. That was a, a phenomenal presentation. I'm very excited. So am I, I'm a math nerd. So yes. <laughs> I get very excited about these books. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So, um, I guess we're on to, um, the budget. Yes. So uh, adjustments to the uh, fiscal year 23 budget. This is the opportunity for adjustments to be made prior to approval, at which time it then becomes the school committee's budget. Fund balance was reduced to 2% at the last budget workshop. Um, per your school committee policy, this can't go any lower. Um, this is not the last time the committee can lower the budget um, or change the budget. If adjustments are made, I would request that the committee provide a short recess so that um, Finance Director Ned Draper can recalculate some figures if needed. Okay. So this is the time if anyone wants to open up a discussion about any adjustments with regards to the um, FY23 budget. Yes, Mr. Luzon. Uh, my question is basically, I mean, it, some things alluded to in D2, but we're discussing D1. Can I bring up something that's in D2? Um, I think you can bring up anything in the budget. Yeah, please. anything in the budget. Yeah, at this okay. point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when Thank was you. the additional revenue calculated in after our last budget workshop or prior to tonight? Um, Mr. Draper, yes, please. I, I think that language is included so that we cover any adjustments we make. Uh, but we did not have additional revenue. Oh, I'm not reading it right. Ned is reporting that the total amount of reductions, including additional revenue to date is 500,164. I thought that's what we, reduct, uh, we reduced it by, but I, I just assumed that that was in reference to revenue. Well, the way, the reason that is there parenthetically is when we do the adjustment to our fund balance, mm -hmm. For, for purposes of our accounting, it's treated as a revenue. Okay. If you go to sec yeah, if you go to section five of our uh, budget, you'll see it listed in the revenue section. I'm just interpreting the way it's written. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Thank you, Mr. Lazan. Ms. Juicy, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, so there was a little bit of conversation today about um, the reduction of some classrooms in some of the elementary schools. And I hit email Gina and Ned to get the financial impact of that. Can you talk about that a little bit in terms of um, the thoughts behind reducing those teachers specifically at Richmond Elementary School? Um, because if depending on the conversation, I might want to talk about adding back to the budget. So that's why it's germane to this particular um, agenda item. So if you could talk about that a little bit and then maybe the fiscal impact of adding back a teacher. I would appreciate it. Sure. So um, this year, and again, this isn't done in consultation. All the principals review with us um, the numbers, their school data, the, the needs are across the board. So based on the current structure, there would be a reduction in kindergarten. We sort of overshot the kindergarten classroom with the uncertainty due to the pandemic, the additional spacing that was necessary, the uncertainty of the new developments in Richard, Richmond. We weren't, uh, we didn't know the families, the ages of the students or the grades. So we had added the additional one. Um, and also the history in Richmond is really that families um, tend to register very last minute. 
So it provides sort of some uncertainty to so to ensure we would have overcapacity, we added a classroom in K. Um, it, it is the numbers in kindergarten in Richmond are the lowest in the district. Most of our kindergartens in Ashaway, Hope Valley, and in Charleston are on 21 to 20. And Rich, uh, Richmond's are about 15 to 17 students per class. So we move that back down based on our, our current review of the numbers and the census in the area around students of age for kindergarten. So that was why that was one reduction in kindergarten. The other reduction came to grade two. So the grade two, uh, and it was very similar based on the overall review of the numbers and the decreased number. So I think for example, in the budget currently uh, projected we're projecting in grade two next year, approximately 78 students. And what we're, what we're seeing um, is we're, we're actually lost a few more. So we're down to 76. So the numbers are decreasing. Some have moved out. And based on those, those numbers, which would put the classrooms at 20 to 21 as well, um, overall, um, that, that was the overall reasoning. And again, talking with Ms. Martin again today about her comfort level with how the structures look. Um, and as you know, we, we keep an eye on the numbers. Typically, if we see anything that gets to 23, we start to make some changes. I know that's been the past history as well. I do look at the numbers with our data analyst, Dorothy Fitzgerald, and the principals monthly to, to keep an eye. So sometimes the projected numbers in November do tend to come down. Right now, we have no, no room has been increasing. All uh, numbers have been decreasing, if anything, not by a, a lot, but you'll see two to sometimes two to four students, at least so far in the fall that we've that we um, anticipated that have left the one of the towns. That was the overall rationale, the big picture uh, review. But we also uh, also looking at data to um, Susie Scanapieco's point, we're noticing huge growth at all our elementary schools based on beginning of the year data to middle of the year. Um, we're really encouraged by what we're seeing. I think we all knew with day-to-day -day instruction being more consistent with in-person learning, we were going to see natural growth, but we also see uh, students surpassing stretch goals, which is really nice to see at this time of the year. And we're keeping a close eye on that as well. Okay, that's part one of Ms. Her, your question. And part two, I think Catherine, you wanted to know what the budget impact would be if we wanted to add either one or two teachers back. So typically, unless the teacher um, is a, you know one of the teachers that would let's say was a filling in or uh, not necessarily uh, tenured, you would have rights back to your position. So if if I calculated based on the teachers going back to the position that they would put in, and if there was no changes and they if they didn't change healthcare, for example, you're probably looking at about one hundred fifty four thousand to return both classrooms to Richmond. And um, they 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 uh, have less seniority. Where like a school like Charleston has a more veteran staff, you'd look more in the one hundred twenty range. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I want to see how the rest of the conversation kind of goes before I make any recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lucy. Mr. Day, you had your hand raised and then Mr. Luzon. Mr. Day, you have the floor. We've uh, tried in the past few years to uh, balance out our classes by changing the Cheroho Act to the point where we could have lower class class sizes throughout the district, but uh, it falls back on the town towns not embracing the way to have smaller classes and cost less money to transport these kids around. So uh, it's it's difficult, uh, but you know until until the three towns decide to work together and make this district uh, more. Uh, Taxpayer friendly, as it pertains to keeping keeping the the budget down. We're going to continue to have spikes, and we're going to have some classes that are in some schools are going to be down to 17, 18 kids, and other classes are going to be up at the at the at the max per, per the the contract. So until the towns get together and decide that uh, Cherroho is, is is one community as far as the school districts goes, uh, this is never going to going to uh, Going to happen. So, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Day, Mr. Luzon, and then Mr. And then Mr. Callahan. Mr. Luzon, you have the floor. I don't want to just be known that Richmond may be in need because Charleston first grade is going to be pretty tough next year, also. Um, and my other question would be: um, hypothetically, let's just say we live with what we have, and come September 1st, all of a sudden our numbers really jump up and we have to add three teachers. 
are we going to be in a pickle come that time, Ned? <laughs> so so to, to follow on for that unofficial term, uh, yes, we'll, we'll be in a, we'll be in a pinch. Um, the things, you know, there's some things we can do. Um, they're, they're not great. Some of them might include adjusting our ESSER. Some of them might include adjusting when we uh, do some of those investments. Um, but they create problems down the road. So even if you can get through a year, uh, you create some, some other problems that are unforeseen. So yes, we, we would be in a very difficult spot. So if we don't possibly address this now, it, we could possibly have problems or we may not, we don't know. I'm just asking what has to be asked. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, use, oh, go ahead. I was saying we, we do also review the homeschool numbers. So when we do our um, overalls, we sometimes figure in if students return back to homeschool, like for Ms. Lazan, when you mentioned um, the first grade at Charlestown, we've already seen actually three students have um, have left already. So I, I, it was a projected at 66. We're now currently at 63. Um, and and it, most have moved out of the state, not those that have left. But um, to your point, the, the oftentimes the hardest number get to figure out is kindergarten. Right now, nobody has new developments happening. Although what we're seeing in Charlestown is people are moving in, but more um, out of state families, uh, many who didn't have uh, children. Thank you. All set, Ms. Suzanne, you good? Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Callahan. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, Gina, I guess one of the, the things that, um, you know, I'm hearing from, from folks in, in my town is the concern that um, there's a lot of, there's a, a big difference between having a class size of 20 and having a class size of 20 and trying to deal with challenges um, in that in that classroom as well. Can you, you know, can you walk me through your discussion with with uh, Ms. Martin and the confidence level that you and her have come up with that that's not going to be an issue and about um, maybe close out on some of the, the services that you're providing uh, in that area? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, Richmond, uh, a few years back, had added uh, the behavior management assistant. I, my understanding uh, from Ms. Martin is that that was a conversation that her and Superintendent Richie had to be able, um, and actually in lieu of an assistant principal, they felt that would have been more impactful. Uh, she's seen a lot of support there. Her non-academic, we call it non-academic RTI, which is students who, ha who have a higher need. Um, I think we're all, all seeing with the pandemic, our students have had different levels of trauma or, or um, mental health concerns concerns or things that have come up um, due to quarantines, et cetera. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, not being around their peers and things like that. So we actually, that's what we use a lot, a lot of our ESSA funding. So Miss um, Martin felt very comfortable about the structure. Again, I, like I said, I mentioned, I spoke with her again today. She didn't feel like um, there were concerns in her grade three behavior that would, um, that would impact her decisions or our decisions in grade four. We also know that with the student service specialists that we're adding to the district, that's an additional support, which we heard from our teachers across the board, K through 12, was that this was an area of need on their part that, you know, while we're working on our mathematics, our English language arts, uh, it's uh, social studies, et cetera, that the need to ensure that they understand that skill development around um, the whole child that to be able to support the majority of the students. And you'll always have that 5%, but she felt very confident um, and I and I know uh, I had talked to a few parents who who have had some history, and their and their children are now older, and they have siblings in Richmond now. So the concern um, that I heard was that, uh, for example, the uh, grade three, which is remaining at five classrooms, that those those students will then move to four grade four classrooms, and uh, um, the grade four was an addition again this year, but it's it, um, that they they get used to being together, and then shifting them into. Uh, from five to four can impact their peer-to-peer -peer, um, relationships is, is basically, so that was a concern. I think, you know, um, we've all talked about, and I think we, anyone would have the debate, I think the more one-to-one -one interaction with our teachers, with our educators is always a beneficial. Um, it's 
something that Miss Martin believes the, the, the structure looks good. Actually, her advocacy was that we keep the five in uh, classrooms in grade three. She felt like that's where um, her, her income in grade two going to grade three was where the, the five needed to remain, which is why it did. Ms. Callahan, you, you have any more questions? You're all set. Yeah, no, thank you, Gina. I okay. appreciate the uh, detailed response. I, I think I'm, I'm okay for now. I'm like okay. thinking of more questions. More questions. I, I need to think. Of, yeah. I need to think on this a little bit, but I appreciate the detailed response. Yeah, I agree, um, Mr. Day. Do you you have your hand raised? Do you have another comment? No, it's okay. I just wanted to make sure. And Ms. Chambers, you had your hand raised. You're all set. Okay, we have two um, attendees. Oh, wait, wait a minute. second, wait a second. Okay. Yeah, I had to unmute myself. Okay. Um, okay, so you may have addressed this. Um, we had an unusual number of kids homeschooled, homeschool over the last two years. Have you considered that if the, all of those kids came back because the pandemic has subsided that we would be in trouble then. I mean, so how, what, what numbers did you play with the idea that kids would return to in-person school once the pandemic has subsided? I, I, we actually looked at those numbers when planning and the numbers um, were like, so for example, we know some families have a history of long-term homeschooling that, that there was no interest to return. That was not because right. of the pandemic. So uh, we asked those questions when they, when they do come out. So even, um, Based on parents that would let's say said, you know, I, I'm not a fan of the mask mandate, or if you can't guarantee the mask's going to be on, I, I'm I'm going to sort of hold my child at home. We factored yeah. in those in, in our um okay in our counts. Okay, so that has been a strong consideration because I know it's an unusual situation now to even think about home parents once they homeschool, they pretty much stick with homeschool. But if the reason is the pandemic and the mask and all of that, then they would probably want to return. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I do have two uh, people in the public who'd like to have, have questions or comments, uh, but I'd like to give it to the, the committee first. Anyone else have any questions or comments? I'll go to the public. Okay. Um, Amanda LaDuke, uh, you have the floor. Hi everyone, how are you? Good, thank you. And, and Amanda, Every where are you from? What town? So I'm I'm a parent of um, a Richmond first grader, and then I'll have a kindergartner that's entering in a year, and he's currently at the Hope Valley Preschool. Thank you. Um, so I appreciate you guys listening, and I guess I'm just trying to clarify because there's a lot of discussion going on with the Richmond parents and. Um, just generally concerned about cutting staff and things like that, and so. I think I misunderstood some of the stuff that was posted. So is it a cut of a kindergarten teacher and a cut of a second grade teacher? Is that correct? Yes, Ms. Uh, Ms. Yes. McCart saying yes. Do you have that? That is correct. That is correct okay. information. Okay. Um, Mrs. Picard, so that means that you're taking four first grade classrooms and putting them into three? No, no, oh. the first, the, there's no, um, the first grade classrooms, there'll be four second grade, the first grade will go to four second grades. The, so we have the four first going into four second. Oh, so the current second grade going into third will be cut to three or one less. No, the current no. second grade is, uh, the car, those, we have five grade two, they're going to five grade threes. So then I'm confused on where the cut's occurring. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So there's a cut in kindergarten. Right now there's five kindergarten classrooms and okay. now we're moving to four kindergarten classrooms. Beautiful. And Got it. So there's five grade two classrooms moving to four grade two classrooms because we currently have four grade one classrooms. Okay. So if my son's a first grader, I guess, so I'm also a teacher in a different district and I, I just hope that everyone's thinking about like with these kids at such a young age, like is now the best time to be making classes bigger, you know, with learning loss, like you guys were saying, social emotional kids being out because of the pandemic, kids being out because of homeschool, 
you know, seeing, you know, I'm, I run RTI, I see the RTI numbers skyrocket again, not reflecting Cheru in particular, but just in general in the educational field that I just hope we're thinking about like, like some of the other committee members have said is now the best time to be kind of cutting those out until we kind of see how everything plays out and making sure that we have money in the budget for that. You know, as a Richmond parent, I pay a slew of taxes, you know, and I want to make sure that, you know, my neurotypical child, but other children that are struggling are getting the support they need. And in a class of 25, that's, that's hard to do. That is hard to do. And, and there actually are no classrooms set for 25, but to, to your point, you said you have a first grader. So your first grader, there's four first grades at Richmond. They're going into four second grades okay. next year. I know. I'm just ag- advocating for some of the, you know, parents that maybe have second sure. graders that are, Absolutely. you know, I just, like I said, I'm speaking from the parent, but also like the teacher point of view. And I, you know, I just think it's important to keep that, you know, that it's been a rough couple of years, especially for these, for the babies. I mean, they don't even know what school is supposed to be, you know? And so I would, I just, I just want that kind of be thought out that it's been tough and maybe cutting teachers. So classes are bigger, puts just more burden on everybody, which ultimately the kids are the ones that are going to end up struggling. But I appreciate you guys listening. Thank you for clarifying that, because obviously things that talk sometimes are misconstrued. So <laughs> I'm just wanted to clarify. No worries. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Perney. Okay. Mr. Perney, you have, you can speak. Yeah. Hey, thank you for having me uh, jump in. Um, this comes from uh, kind of the educator perspective here as well. I'm not necessarily uh, a parent perspective, but I certainly uh, understand that point of view as, as well. Um, one thing that I think we need to uh, go to uh, Ryan's point that he had brought up as far as some of the behavior challenges that uh, come up maybe at Richmond and some of his concerns as far as uh, cutting classrooms is um, – you know, maybe we could put money in the budget to uh, have maybe all of our direct support um, ESP members. So, you know, our TAs and BMAs, um, not all of them are currently uh, certified in CPI de-escalation. And I think that's something that could maybe benefit uh, and alleviate some of the stress in those buildings. Um, so maybe, uh, you know, some concerns I know about behaviors specifically in that building uh maybe having folks district-wide um and tas and and bmas all be uh certified and that might alleviate some of the stress and some of the anxiety that some community members may have so just an idea to bring up and uh think about going forward thank you mr perney um You have the floor, Pixel 3A XL. Okay, this Goldie Williams. I know, hi Goldie. Hi, Um, I was wondering if you figured the people who are going to leave the Richmond area to the Met and to Kingston Hill Academy and the Compass School, have you figured that out? Because I know a lot of people in Richmond go to Compass and Kingston Hill and the Met. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ms. Picard, do you have a? We would have those numbers. I can get them. I can get them to the committee. Um, actually, you, you may have um, seen some of the reports. It shows you the number of schools, private, yes. charter, or out of district. Yeah, I, th- I think we have those numbers, yes. Uh, uh, Ms. Juicy, you have, a, you, you have your hand raised? Thank you. Um, so based on the conversation, I will let everybody know, I'll show my hand early, that I am leaning towards adding to this budget. Um, one of the cuts at Richmond makes complete sense because you're just moving them along. One of the cuts I'm just leery of because we've we've kind of seen this battle play out before in this community where we go down and then the next year it, it doesn't work as quite as flawlessly as we'd hoped and then we add back. So I'm leaning in that direction. Um, this is not the only opportunity though for us to make adjustments to this budget. We have a public hearing. Um, where hopefully we'll have a little bit more participation too to hear what other people have to say. Um, but again, to show my hand, I'm leaning towards adding towards that budget. I don't know that I have the support for that tonight, but I'm thinking if we ruminate on it a little bit and we have another public hearing, 
I might have another opportunity to get a little bit more support. Um, and I'll also add that we cut a fair amount from this budget and nobody really asked us to. That was kind of a, a forward thinking decision that we made as, as, a com as a committee, knowing the way that things typically go. So I am more comfortable adding back to the budget than I would have been in previous years. So just so everybody kind of knows what I'm thinking, put it out in the public sphere so other committee members know this is where my, this is kind of what I'm thinking. I'm not quite ready to do it tonight though. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. JC. Um, Dr. Callahan, do you have the floor? And then um, Karen, you have next. Ryan. Yeah, <clears throat> thanks, Chair. Yeah, uh, thanks, Catherine. I think you, um, I, I share your um, mm -hmm. opinion and, and leanings for sure. Um, I think that the going from uh, five classes in third grade this year to four classes um, for fourth grade next year is, is where I'm, my concern is anyways. I, but I, I, I do want to, um, you know, think over the numbers a little bit in terms of uh, making a, a final decision, but I, I am leaning in the same direction as you. So thanks for articulating that. Thank you. Ms. Reynolds, you have the floor. I'm definitely leaning towards uh, where Catherine and Ryan are. It's um, not the time to be cutting, especially with everything that we're seeing. And we don't know the numbers with the number of kids who are um, outplaced either in charter schools or homeschooling who might come back in. Um, and the numbers are kind of tight. I think um, it's not the time. We cut some from the budget and we could definitely add back, um, which would, would benefit the kids. Thank you, Ms. Reynolds. Uh, Ms. Lagori, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I agree largely with Catherine and Ryan and, and um, Karen and others. I I think there's opportunity though um, to think about this far deeper than just the numbers. The, the numbers tell part of the story, but not the whole story. Um, and, and, and I don't know how we can do this, but there may be an opportunity to track um, what happens after students go from a smaller class to a larger class and how they perform academically for sure. I think that can be tracked and possibly behaviorally. Um, you know, it would seem like there's an opportunity within any given class to track behavioral issues that arise um, both during the time there's larger classes and then in the following year. So while I, while I am leaning towards the same direction Catherine's in, I feel like it's important that we make these decisions based on some semblance of evidence to support it. I, I hear everyone saying, and, and while I don't disagree, I hear everyone saying this isn't the time. I would argue it's never the time to cut yes. staff and make larger classrooms. But I think we have to provide something more to our constituents than this isn't the time. That we have to actually say, here's why we're doing it. We have the evidence to support that there's a need for this. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ligori. Ms. Chambers, you have the floor. Yes, um, I'm, I'm concurring with everything that was said, but I also want to remind everyone that we are cutting the fund balance, okay? Um, and I just really believe we should, I would rather err on the side of overstaffing and not having to hire more people than to understaff and then have to scramble at the last minute. This committee, as long as I've been part of it, has always advocated for fair and, and, and smaller class sizes, okay? We've always leaned in that direction as far as I can remember. And I would hate to have to, at the last minute, have to overburden a class because we just underfunded the uh, staffing, for staffing. So I am leaning toward not cutting at least all, not cutting all of it, cutting maybe one or two, posi one position, but not all of these positions. I just think we need to, to budget appropriately for this concern. That's it. Okay, um, Ms. Ms. McAllister, you have the floor. Um, yes, thank you. Is there any, chart or um, 
yes. some place where these numbers are put together. I, I tend to be a visual learner. So funny. <laughs> so I was just going to ask that too. <laughs> if I could see the difference between last year or what we're doing this year and next year, that would help me a lot in the numbers in those classes. In your budget book, I believe it's section... Seven, is it seven? Section seven, correct. Okay. So um, okay. I just have asked, uh, Chair, may I ask just a follow-up question for those? I just Absolutely. Want to make, um, and I know no one's made any decisions yet, but the cuts were in kindergarten and grade two, what it sounds like the committee um, concern is making sure that the grade three rolls up to grade four. Am I understanding that correctly? I Okay, I just want to make sure. Not the cut, but the, the fact that we move the grade three and keep it at five. All right, just so I understand the that we're on the same page. Thank you. I'm sorry, Ms. Ms. McAllister, do you have? No, like I said, I think I just need to see those numbers. I do know that um, third graders, I taught third grade for years, and um, third graders going into fourth grade are much more able to um, deal with larger classrooms. There's much more cooperative work that's done, but, we didn't have pandemics either. So, you know, that's, that's just an observation from my years there, but they're much more able to have higher numbers. But that being said, I just would like to look at those numbers too and compare the years and what we're looking at for numbers in classrooms for next year. Yeah, and just, I know uh, one of the, the notes too, that's probably important to pull out for Richmond is Ms. McHugh's class is incorporated in these numbers. So like, for example, you may see, um, 86 projected for grade four. And there's actually, uh, let's say one student or uh, one one or two students in Ms. McHugh's class, for example. So those numbers are incorporated by grade level, even though they're not necessarily in the classrooms. So I can, I can uh, put together a table so the committee can sort of take a look at the current numbers now in seats, because those are what you have at the budget package is projected. And that's when we, mm -hmm. we figure out homeschools, et cetera. But we've had to have a, a few uh, leave and then, um, and that's what we figure in if homeschool students would return, for example. But I can get you the current enrollment. Thank you. Ms. Lausanne, you had your hand up. And thank you, whoever. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I just want to remind people, I said in the beginning, it's not just Richmond that's being impacted. Right. Charleston grade one is going to have a very large class size next year. So I just don't want to be known that, oh, we're going to try to address Richmond's needs. <laughs> I'm going to get a little territorial here and say, you know, I want to address all the needs. So that's three great uh, classrooms we're looking at. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Luzon. We don't need you to get territorial. We're, I was just going to men mention that um, if we get those numbers, I'd like to see how it affects all the classes in all of Terre Haute. Ms. Drusty, do you, you, I'm sorry, I didn't want to overstep you, but Nope, that's fine. And to Craig's point, yes, I was absolutely looking at uh, the Charleston numbers. I had asked Ned for those as well. So right. Charleston would not be forgotten. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so I don't think at this point uh, there's any person who wants to make a motion. We want to kind of ruminate, think about it, maybe get some more feedback at the public meeting. That might be, you know, but we're, some of us are leaning towards maybe adding a, a staff or two. Um, okay, that was a good discussion. Anyone else, um, anybody in the public have a comment before we move on? This is the time if you have one, because this is, you know, we need the information from our constituency as far as with regards to budget. Um, oh, good, I, I'm glad I, um, is it Ms. Brennan? There you are. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hi. Yeah. Yes, this is, this is Thea uh, Brennan. I'm a uh, Richmond resident. I have two children at Richmond Elementary. I know I had emailed um, the school committee and Ms. Picard. Um, and basically, um, my concern as a parent is um, we have several um, current grades right now, currently kindergarten, second grade, and third grade all have five classrooms. So with the projected enrollment for next year, the only grade that will have five classrooms is um, the third grade, the, the new third grade for next year. So 
I know it looks a little bit confusing because it looks like you're losing a second grade class. Um, and I understand that the current first grade only has four classes. So next year they'll still be in four classes, but currently kindergarten has five classes. They'll be down to four. And then third grade has five classes and next year in fourth grade, they would also go down to four. And I know in Richmond, historically, there's been issues where when those five classes have been downsized to four or four down to three, that's been problematic. And so that's a concern for myself and some other parents um, is that um, it's not only the, the number of students, but the number of classrooms and then the, those supports um, as well. And I know I looked at the numbers for the other schools um, and the numbers may look a little bit different, but also a lot of times like Ashway has two classrooms, they always have two classrooms. So those children aren't then um, decreasing into one classroom. So that's where some of the concern is as a Richmond parent. Um, but I did in my email also note concern for Charlestown um, having 22 students in each of their four classrooms as well. So. I appreciate each and every one of you. I think this has been a great conversation and I thank you for taking the time to listen and taking the time to think about it. Thank you, Ms. Brennan. Thank you. Comments. You're welcome. Have a good night. I don't see anybody else with their hands raised. Anybody from the committee? That was a great, I agree. It was a great conversation. So, are we ready to approve the F23 budget or do we want, I don't know how that works because it sounds like, I know we can make changes, but um, this is this the meeting we're supposed to approve it? I can't remember. Yes, yep. it is. Except. Yes. Except. This is the meeting it's approved, but you still can make changes, but okay. you approve a budget tonight. So the we can, becomes, okay. It becomes the school committee's budget after tonight. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I had the, the, the date's correct. Dr. Callahan, you want the honors? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm waiting for Gina to make the recommendation. Right, okay. I actually, I'm gonna uh, do that right now. So if there are no adjustments made this evening and based on the current budget that we're moving forward and the school committee accepts, and I, I am um, looking for your approval, that you will see that Charlestown would have an increase overall of 2.59%, uh, Richmond an increase of 2.05%, and Hopkinton an increase of 1.05%. And I am recommending that the committee approve the FY23 budget in the amount of $55,693,405, an overall increase of 1.81%. So moved. Second. And it's been a motion by Dr. Callahan and a second by Mr. Luzon to accept the FY23 budget in the amount of $55,693,405, an overall increase of 1.81%. Open this up to discussion and or questions. I think we did already have a lot of discussions. Okay, I'll take it to a vote. Those in favor of the approval of this budget and it'll become now the school committee budget. Okay, any, any opposed? Recusals or abstentions? That's unanimous. Now we can still cont continue to make adjustments as we're still working through the budget. Um, yep. It just now becomes our budget and not the superintendent's budget anymore. She can pass it on to us. <laughs> okay. So now we're on to consent agenda items. Does anyone want anything pulled from that? A1. A1 minutes. A2, A3, no. Oh. No, just A1. Okay, just A1. Anyone else want anything pulled from the consent? Mr. Day? Mr. Day? Where is Mr. Day? There he is. Mr. Day? Yeah, I... Uh, Thank you, Catherine. Uh, item E on a balance sheet. I just want to make a comment on it. I don't necessarily want to want to pull it but i did, did want to make a comment well, on it we can pull it if you want to make a comment it's fine that's that's why we will pull them so we can make comments or ask right. questions that's fine thank you so we'll go back to to e um, fix e anyone else want anything pulled before we nope okay someone make a motion for me 
So, Madam Chair, I yes, make sir. a motion. I make a motion to move the remainder. But before I do, I want to recognize donations. One, a donation from Staples of North Kingston from Rebecca Gwaltney of Miscellaneous School Supplies to Richmond Elementary School. Thank you, Mr. Luzon. Second. Uh, second, we have a second. Um, we have a, uh, we had a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda items. Those in favor? Aye. Any opposition? Recusals or abstentions? No? Okay, thank you. Let's Madam see. Chair? Yes, sir. Make a motion to approve A1 executive session minutes of January 11th. 2022 approval of the executive session minutes of December 14th, 2021. Minutes not sealed. Second. Thank you. There's been a motion by Mr. Luzan, a second by Mr. Uh, Callahan to approve the executive session minutes of January 11th, 2022. Any discussion on those minutes or additions? No? Okay, I'll move it to a vote. Those in favor? Any opposition? Recusal? I'm abstaining. Abstain. Thank you, Mr. Day. Mr. Day, abstain. Mr. Madam Day, um, balance sheet. You had a question on 6E Madam balance sheet. Madam so, Chair. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I make a motion to accept oh. E, the balance sheet. Oh, thank you very much. I forgot about that. We hadn't done that. There's a motion to accept second. E, balance sheet, second by Mr. Callahan. Any? Now we open it up to discussion. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Day, you have the floor. Uh, yes, uh, the balance sheet, I was not concerned about the first part of the balance sheet. I was concerned about the uh, Charo District Activity, <laughs> Student Activities Fund. Uh, this has been a, a, an issue of mine for a number of years and I'm, I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna bring it up for a dis discussion at a future agenda, but I, I want, I would respect that our, our school commitments look at the balance of some of these teams in the middle school. We, we spent some time here talking about, uh, you know, equality and stuff like that. But if you take a look at, uh, I'm not gonna get into it, I'm just saying, but if you take a look at the the, the money that some of these teams have in their, in their SAF account, it, it, the question to me rises, what, other other kids that don't have balance sheet balances like this getting as far as education in the middle school. So I want that. I'm going to have to ask that as a agenda item for a future uh, school committee meeting. But I think it needs to be addressed, and it needs to be addressed uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Day. I put I noted that as a future agenda item for us. So I'll make sure that it gets on. Um, um, Ron, to reports. So the subcommittee reports. The no, excuse me. We have to take a vote. Sorry. Oh, we have to take a vote. Oh, okay. Vote. Um, do we have a? Okay, so we had a motion to. What was the motion, Mr. Luzon, that you made a motion to? To accept E. Okay, so we now we all make a vote to accept it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those well, in did. favor to accept E. Thank you. Those opposed? Okay. Uh, recused all abstentions? Okay. Thank you. That was unanimous. Thank you, Donna. Okay. Now we're on to reports. Okay. We had uh, subcommittee reports, anti-racism task force met on January 31st. The next scheduled meeting will be February 28th. The Special Education Advisory Committee met on January 20th, 2022. Uh, in my report, we are moving forward and uh, at the health and wellness team, we'll be discussing the peer-to-peer -peer mentoring program. That meeting is on March 8th. Uh, that's something that we're looking to do at the middle school and high school um, with the support of the Collins Foundation. It was actually brought to us by um, Ms. Nelson, who uh, is a strong advocate for the mental health uh, needs of our families and students, as well as um, our uh, panelists that we've had, Lee Raposa, in coordination with... Um, the fact that peer-to-peer -peer mentoring will, would support our narrative of supports for our students at, at middle school and high school level. So we'll have um, more of that conversation, sort of an, an intro meeting to be discussing our opportunities to be able to participate. It already exists in South County and South Kingstown, Narragansett, North Kingstown, um, to name a few. Uh, so we're excited to hear more about that at the health and wellness meeting on March 8th. 
And coming events, we have early release day coming up on uh, February, tomorrow, February 9th. Secondary is dismissed at 1245 with elementary at 155. We have eighth grade open house at the high school tomorrow as well at 6 p.m. We have uh, February break coming up, uh, February 21st to February 25th. The public budget meeting on March 1st, the annual hearing at 7.30 p.m. per the Charaho Act. On March 7th, Hope Valley PTO meeting at 6.30 p.m. And then again, our health and wellness subcommittee meeting at four o'clock p.m. Um, on March 8th. So now we're at the part where we have the school committee request for future agenda items or legal opinions. And Mr. Day, I did note your request to discuss the, uh, the activity funds. Um, and I, I think what I gather is your concern that there's a not there's not equity there. You're you're worried that there's some funds that are more rich than others, say, and that you want to make sure each student gets a a. Uh, well, if you if you look at the report, I mean, no, uh, I know, I agree. Four thousand dollars in one account and three hundred dollars in another account, and I, mm -hmm. I I don't understand how you can say that the kids in the at that at that grade level are getting an equal. Uh, opportunity to uh, to share the uh, middle school uh, environment. Right. So, and I think it'd be a, a important for us to understand what that money is actually used for, what kind of things it is used for, and then is there an is there an inequity among the the grades? That would be something we should look at. I do. I do have two other requests, if I may. Yes, you may. Go ahead. Uh, on the March eighth meeting, uh, an executive session. I'd like to have a discussion on school safety. Okay. And I, I do have a question. Uh, I was looking at the uh, report here uh, by prescribed by state law, uh, uh, regional school committee and bullying re bullying report. And I'm looking at the uh, the middle school here, and uh, I'm, I, do, do do we have a problem over there? Uh, seems to be in all, all, all these other schools in the district are, are showing zero uh, bullying in uh, the middle school uh, the second semester had eight and three three the semester before and last year uh, they were up there too and these other schools uh, we got a problem I'm, I'm asking we got a problem here. I'd like to have have, have some clarification on, on why, why the discrepancy between the middle school and, and the rest of these uh, buildings high school and, and Caller and the rest of them are a non-existent. So that's my other request. Yeah, I, I was, I was actually, I, I, and maybe I'm mistaken, um, Mr. Day. I kind of, I agree with you. I saw that bullying report, and I thought in the past it was always presented in as part of a agenda item, not more, not an FYI. So we would have a chance to ask questions or discuss it. And I, I would just look to the committee. Am I, am I remembering it incorrectly, did, or did we have? No, that it's is, always been an FYI. You can pull it and discuss it, but Barry always put it in as an FYI. That's okay. Me. Okay, maybe that. Okay, maybe. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Abbott, you have the floor. Yes, uh, there was something I read on uh, on the internet on Facebook. Uh, I think it was on the Wesley Wire to the effect that the Attorney General had issued a letter or a clarification that, in their opinion it would be appropriate for school committee members to answer questions from the public or respond to the public during public forum. I'd like a clarification of that. Oh, you want a clarification about whether or not we can respond to? Right. Okay, gotcha. It's my understanding that the attorney general has said that it's okay, but right. I don't have anything in writing. Oh, that's okay. I, I understand your question. Okay. And that hey, might Excuse me? Yes, that would be probably a legal opinion. Can we take a vote on that one, please? Because you'd be asking John for his legal opinion. So we just need to take a vote. Well, you know, Donna, it's, it's in our it's in our code of whatever about. But John has said in the past not to answer. So I think you'd want to check with John. He's okay, so if it's it's a legal opinion, then we need to take a vote on that. Take a, a vote. Committee. Yes, I know. I know. I realize that, but okay. Um, Mr. Abbott, do you want to put it in a, 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 a whatever to the committee recommendation yes, to the I'd committee? I'd like a legal opinion as to whether the attorney general has changed uh, their opinion or, or recommendations regarding school committee members 
being able to reply to questions or comments during public forum. Okay, we have a second on that. Donna, okay, no. Donna Chambers, Ms. Chambers second it. Any discussion on Mr. Abbott's request? Okay, those in favor of having John, let's see, um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Catherine said seven, eight. Okay, those against? I am, I don't think we need it, but that's okay. And then recusals or abstentions? No, okay, so that was, well, it wasn't unanimous, but it was, it was passed. So we will get John to look at that for us and give us a, his legal opinion. Thank you, Mr. Abbott. Um, anyone else? No, okay, I guess Mr. Luzon, we're good. You ready? Yes, sir. Make a motion to adjourn. I have a second, please. Thank you, Mr. Callahan. There's been a motion by Mr. Luzon, a second by Mr. Callahan to adjourn. Those in favor? I don't think anybody's going to oppose that. Thank you. And I'll have a good night. Good night, all. Thank you. Good meeting.